the book, the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 41. I don't know what happened to it. Chapter 40 got downloaded twice. I made a mistake somewhere, so. And this is a really interesting one. So I don't want to leave this out. Chapter 41. Now it came to pass in the seventh month, which is Tishri, that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Elishama, of the seed royal, and the princes of the king, even ten men with him, came unto Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, to Mizpah. And there they did eat bread together in Mizpah. Then arose Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, Nathaniah, and the ten men that were with him, and smote Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, with the sword, and slew him, whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the land. Right? And the chapter before that, 40, is... Important because at the end of this, um, Johanan spoke to Gedaliah the king in Mitzpah. It says, secretly saying, let me go, I pray thee, and I will slay Ishmael the son of Nethaniah, and no man shall know it. Wherefore should he slay thee? All the Jews which are gathered unto thee should be scattered in the remnant in Judah perish. But Gedidai, the son of Ahikam, said unto Johanan, the son of Korea, Thou shalt not do this thing, for thou speakest falsely of Ishmael. Okay, so he didn't listen to um, Johanan, who offered to protect him, and offered to go and kill Ishmael before he gets um, to kill him, Gedaliah. But he didn't listen, and he gets killed. And here we are now, in 41. Ishmael. Oh, did I read this? The, okay, verse 2. Then arose Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and the ten men that were with him, and smote Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, with the sword, and slew him, whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the land. So, uh... Nebuchadnezzar had made him the boss of Judah. He left him there. But he got killed. This guy Ishmael came and killed him. Ishmael also slew all the Jews that were with him, even with Gedaliah at Mizpah, and the Chaldeans that were found there, and the men of war. So who is this guy? He is killing Jews and Babylonians, right? Who is he? Right? Is he an Edomite? Is he an Elamite? Who is this guy? Is he, uh, okay, well, we'll find out a little bit more. And it came to pass the second day after he had slain Gedaliah, and no man knew it, that there came certain from Shechem, from Shiloh, and from Samaria, even four score men, so eighty having their beards shaven and their clothes rent, ripped up, torn, they are mourning, right? And having cut themselves with offerings and incense in their hand to bring them in the house of the Lord. And Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, went forth from Mizpah to meet them, weeping all along as he went. For what? And it came to pass, as he met them, he said unto them, Come to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam. This is a bad guy. And it was so, when they came into the midst of the city, that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, slew them. And cast them into the midst of the pit, he and the men that were with him. So I think it's that jail pit that 
they threw Jeremiah in that's in Judah. I don't know. Maybe some other pit, but... Okay, but ten men were found among them that said unto Ishmael, Slay us not, for we have treasures in the field of wheat and of barley and of oil and of honey. So he forbade and slew them not according uh, among their brethren. So Ishmael, who, who, what is he doing, this guy? It says he's crying. These people came in total mourning, crying. And Ishmael was all weeping all along. Why was Ishmael crying? I think he's just some kind of giant liar or something. And he gets them to go. Uh, he tells them the king. He, he's just lying. Like, what a freak. He's not telling me to go to Judah. He says, come to get Eliah, the king he just killed. Right? He said, come to get Eliah, the son of Ahikam. This, this guy's like a giant liar, right? Ishmael. Okay. So these were 80 people, and he killed 70 of them, and there's 10 left. Now, the pit wherein Ishmael had cast all the dead bodies of the men, whom he had slain because of Gedaliah, was it which Asa, oh, here we go, the king had made for fear of Baasha, king of Israel. And Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, filled it with them that were slain. Okay, this is another pit. Another death pit. Okay. I don't remember Asa, but I don't think he was that good of a person. Because he doesn't stand out. The only ones that really stand out were the kings of Judah who were like Hezekiah and Josiah. And of course, David. He's number one. He's God's favorite. And Solomon before he went nuts, you know. Okay. Um, listen to what he does now. So he throws him in this other death pit. Not the not the Jeremiah death pit jail. And another one. Then Ishmael carried away, I guess it was like the thing to do. That's weird. Oh, well, they cast all the dead bodies. Oh, that's kind of smart, but I'm just saying it's really dirty and nasty that they, they live their life like that. I mean, we could be doing it nowadays. I mean, it might even be preferable to the things that happen. It's just so gross. Look what happens in war, right? They don't dig pits. They leave people dead all over the place. It's so scary and just to even think about it. But look, I guess this is what they did in these days. Um, and it really is the most healthiest thing to do because dead bodies spread disease, right? So they have just like these giant pits where they throw bodies. Oh my gosh. Well, this is just another one. That's the problem we're seeing. Okay. Then, Ishmael carried away captive all the residue of the people that were in Mizpah, even the king's daughters and all the people that remain in Mizpah, whom Nebuzar Adon, the captain of the guard, had committed to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam. So he took everybody that was, that was there. This guy, he killed all the Babylonians that were there. He killed uh, all the, most of them. There's 10 people and then he's taking away the king's um, daughters and the son of, okay. And Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah carried them away captive and departed to go over to the Ammonites. Now, does this give us any idea of who this guy is? He's going over to a land of giants, right? Why is he friendly with this? We have to find out who this guy is, this one. 
Okay. But when Yohanan the son of Korea and all the captains of the forces that were with him heard of all the evil that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, had done, then, see, now he's really, this is the guy that offered to get rid of him. He knew, like, he just had a feeling that he was going to kill his friend, Gedaliah, the king, the new king that Nebuchadnezzar put there. But this here, and who is this guy, Ishmael? He's some terrible, terrible guy. He comes into town, kills everybody, everybody, and... Just like Yohanan warned this Gedaliah, he said, look, let me go after him before he gets you. And he didn't listen, and he winds up killing him. Now, let's see what he does. But when Yohanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces that were with him, heard of all the evil that Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, had done, then they took all the men and went to fight with Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and found him by the great waters that are in Gibeon. Now it came to pass that when all the people which were with Ishmael saw Yohanan the son of Korea and all the captains of the forces that were with him, then they were glad. Uh oh. So all the people that Ishmael had carried away captive from Mizpah cast, oh, it's, oh, they're glad. That's, that's why they're glad. Because of all the slaves, the slaves are all glad. But it says, Yohanan and, uh, and all the captains, they were, they, they were with him. Then they were glad. Okay, it makes sense. I'm like, why are, is the enemy glad? It's not the enemy, it's all the people he's just stolen from Judah. Okay, so all the people that Ishmael had carried away captive from Mizpah cast about and returned and went unto Yohanan the son of Korea. So they just like left. They left. They didn't, they were, they cow, they're not gonna fight him, right? What's Ishmael gonna do? Those are captives. But Ishmael, the son of Nephaniah escaped from Yohanan with eight men and went to the Ammonites. Oh, no. That's crazy. We need to find out who this Ishmael is. He's he's, a, he's an Edomite or an Elamite, one or the other. Then took Yohanan the son of Korea and all the captains of the forces that were with him, all the remnant of the people whom he had recovered from Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah from Mizpah. After that, he had slain Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, even mighty men of war, and the women, and the children, and the eunuchs whom he had brought again from Gideon. And they departed and dwelt in the habitation of Chimham, which is by Bethlehem, to go to enter into Egypt. Which is not what the Lord has told them to do now, is it right? He's told them all, stop it, stay out of Babylon. I mean, st do, stay out of Judah. Go, go to Babylon. We've heard this like a thousand, we've heard this like at least 50 times, at least 30 times at least 20 times since Jeremiah started, all right? This is what we've heard over and over and over. And these people are like, uh-uh, no way. It is worse. And watch what's going to happen the next, next chapter. I already did it. I just had to read this one over, but this is really good. Okay? Because, and see what they're trying to do? They're trying to go into this land that they had been held captive for 400 years. They'd rather go there than go to Babylon. They want to stay put. They want to stay put in Judah. Totally against these 50 times, these 20 times 
God has ordered everybody get out if you want to live. And now look what just happened, right? There's an example. Ishmael just comes in and does this whole marauding and kills the king. The king of Judah that Nebuchadnezzar put in. Well, is it, are they calling him a governor or a king? I don't know, but he's dead. And Yohanan, this guy's trying to protect him. And they're just like trying to stay there. You know, this guy, even though they've been told, I don't know about Gedaliah, but Yohanan is telling him, look, you know, this guy is after you, whatever. And he doesn't listen, he gets killed. Now, they, now they're like, we still, we still are not, we are not going to stay here. It is super bad, but we are not going to Babylon. And they are actually considering going to Egypt. Where they obviously know this is like a 400 year slavery issue. And this is how like desperate. There's one more line because of the Chaldeans and murmurs. For they were afraid of them. Yep, they didn't want to go to Babylon because Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, had slain Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam. See, yeah, they were, they were okay. They were going to stay there until that happened. Whom the king of Babylon made governor in the land. Okay, he was made king. He's dead. I like this story. getting good.